Welcome back. So we're going to pick up where we left off. We've covered index, new, create. Now we're moving on to show. So again, the point of the show page is that it shows all the information or more information than the index about one particular item. And the path has an ID in it. So ours will be blogs slash ID, and it's a get request. We have a few goals. Add the show route, the template. Then we want to have links so that on the index page, we can have a button that says read more and that will take us to the show page and then we want to style the show template just a little bit. Let's get started by defining the route. So after our create, we'll add in another comment and this needs to be an app.get slash blogs slash colon ID request and response and save and we can do a simple res.send show page to start and just make sure that this works. So restart the server and we can go to blog slash anything and we'll see show page. Of course the IDs will be long mongoose IDs that look like that and we won't be typing those but we'll be clicking links to see them. So let's do that now. Let's go back and add a link to the show page on the index so that we can have a button that says read more right here next to the post itself that will take us to the show page. So in our index template, if we open it up instead of views, first thing that we'll do is just after the blog body, add an anchor tag and we'll just say read more. And the href is going to be slash blogs, but that ID is a variable for each blog. So we need EJS and that needs to be blog dot underscore ID. We'll save, restart. We now have a link and if we click on it, watch the URL, blog slash 563, blah, blah, blah. Same thing here with a different ID. All right, so now we need to fill in the logic in the route, which is supposed to take this ID, find the corresponding blog and then render the show template. Let's begin by finding the correct blog inside that show route. So the mongoose method that we use is blog.findById and that takes two arguments, the ID and the callback. So the ID is right here, request.params.id and our callback is right there. We'll have an error and then we'll call it found blog. There we go. We'll check for the error again, if error. And let's just do something simple. We'll do a redirect back to the index page. Eventually, I'll be showing you much nicer error handling where we can show a message that says blog not found, or I'm sorry, can't find that blog, and it'll take you back to the page you were just on. But for now, we'll just always go back to slash blogs but there shouldn't be anything that causes an error unless our database is completely shut off or something. So this really it doesn't matter for us at this point. Else res.render the show template and we need to pass in found blog and we'll just call it blog. So found blog inside the template will be called blog. Now we need that show template. So let's make that now. Touch, views, show.ejs, open that up, and in here, I'm going to start by actually copying what I have in new, which is a form and we don't want any of that, but what we do want is some of this basic stuff like the header, UI, main text, container, segment, we'll keep that for now, um, but inside of it, instead of huge header, Let's add in the title of the post, and the title should be blog.title. Let's save that, and let's see if it works. So again, blog is whatever we found inside of the show route right here. We looked for it with the ID, blog.findById. If we find it, if there's no error, pass found blog through under the name blog to the show template. In the show template, we're using blog. All right, moment of truth. 
Let's click one of these links. There we go, first post. So if I click on this one, we should see my new dog. And we do. Great, so we have the basics, the hard part really done. Now it's just a matter of displaying the information that we want to display. So we'll go back and we'll definitely want to display the image. We'll want to display the content as well. So I'll steal some of that from the index. We already have all of this written out and we'll just style it a little bit differently here. There we go. We'll just start with this, but we will be making this look nicer. But let's see what we get. If we refresh, there's our post. Here's our show page. One thing that is worth noting is that this currently doesn't show anything that we don't see on the index. And that's because our index shows everything. What most blogs do is that they show part of the post. So if we had a 10,000 line blog post, we don't want it to take up 10,000 lines here. Rather, we might have a preview of a paragraph or so, and then you click on read more. And we'll do that in just a moment, but let's start by styling this a little bit. So the first thing that we have is our main text container. We have our huge header. And then inside of that, we're gonna add another div where we're gonna put everything. Inside of that div, I'm gonna give it a class equal to UI top attached segment. What segment does is it puts a little border around things. I'll show you what it looks like. Inside of that though, we're gonna add a div class equal to item. And then inside of the item, we're putting all of our content. So we'll start with the image. And rather than just displaying the entire image how it is, we can add a semantic class called UI centered rounded image, which is four classes. So UI image will just give us a nice semantic UI image, but if we give it centered, it will then center the image in the container and rounded will give it some rounded corners. It won't be circular. You can do that with, I think, circle image or circular image, but rounded just changes the corners a little bit. Let's just check that out to start. There we go, we're getting closer. And then we'll go in here and add another div this one will be class equal to content. And if you wanna know where I'm getting this from, if you go onto item, views item on semantic UI, this is where I'm taking it from. So we have div item, inside of an item, we can have an image and then content, which is exactly what I did. So we have an item with content inside. And that's not really the purpose. You're not gonna be an expert on semantic UI after this. It's again, just, just to show you another framework, but not to get you you know, to make you an expert in semantic. All right, so inside of that, we're then gonna add in our span with the created at, just like that. And we'll save. One small change though, is that this is not really ideal for a user to see. What we can do is very easily change that into a more readable date. And there's a few methods with uh, JavaScript dates. There's one called to string. There's one called to date string, which is what we want. And I'll show you what that looks like. If I just call it right here and refresh, notice what we have now. I refresh and I get a nice English human readable version, Sunday, November 1st, 2015. Perfect. So we'll save that. Let's keep working a little bit here. Let's add in another div. This is called description. And this is another semantic class. Inside of there, we'll just add our paragraph, just like that. And refresh the page. And we have our blog post relatively done for now. I will get rid of this div with a line inside of it. We don't need that line. And that's from the segment that we have here. So if we get rid of that one and we keep the outer segment, we end up with this, or we could go the other way around and get rid of the outer segment and keep the inner one, just like this. Whichever you think looks best, I think I'll go back and keep the outer one. Sure, totally up to you though. All right, now let's get some posts in our database that have some longer text to display. We'll copy some lorem ipsum, just like this. 
And if we go back, new post, this time I have a different image URL, I'll be a surprise, and I'll just call this new post with longer text, terrible title. Submit. And we get this gigantic image here because we're not styling it. And then we get a lot of text. So obviously we don't want all of this text on the index page, so we'll work on that. And if I click on read more, I now get my nice blog post here. But notice that everything is condensed. We don't have those paragraph lines that we wanted if we can't add breaks in between. So to make this a little bit of a better, more usable blog, we should let users enter HTML, which you probably have seen if you've, if you've ever blogged before, some variant of HTML, something like WordPress, or if you've used something like Medium, you don't write HTML yourself, but you can make things bolded, you can include images, you can include paragraphs, italicized text. Well, if we do that now, if we try and make a new post, I'll keep the same image again, and let's steal that lorem ipsum again. Just part of this. Let's do something obvious like a strong tag around some of this. So if it worked, we would see some bolded text and submit. And I forgot a title, but that's okay. And you'll see that our content is displayed, but it's not run, it's not shown as HTML. And there's a good reason for that which is that it's not always that safe to let users just enter their own HTML or their own code and just execute it. And you might be thinking, what's the worst that can happen? It's just HTML. Well, what can happen is that someone could actually enter a script tag and run JavaScript. So I'll show you that later. Right now though, it's fine because we're not actually displaying the HTML. If we wanted to, it's a really simple change, one character actually. So that's the show template. And if we look at the show template, Right now we're displaying blog.body. If I change this equal sign to a dash, what that will actually do is take whatever blog.body returns and evaluate that, run it as code, rather than just displaying the string. So if I refresh the page, we now get our strong tag right there. And if I inspected it, you'd see it's an actual strong tag. So changing it from an equal sign to a dash is really powerful it then actually evaluates the code. So if we do another post, same image, and this time we do a first paragraph and a closing paragraph, and then we duplicate that. And then let's get some lorem ipsum and just steal some of these lines. We'll just have two simple paragraphs. You'll see that we end up now, after our giant images, we end up with two paragraphs here which is great because now a user can actually enter in content and specify the style. But here's a problem. So if I enter in something random here, I can do this script and I can just type some code in here. I'll just do something stupid like I hacked you. Sure, we'll leave it misspelled. And if I enter this now, this is HTML that's going to be run and it's a script tag which means this will be run as JavaScript. So when I go to that page now, I get that alert. Obviously a single alert's not that bad, but you can probably imagine that things can escalate from there. There are ways of preventing that issue of getting rid of any script tags. I'll show you how to do that uh, at the end as an optional video in this series. It's called sanitizing our inputs. There are, there's a package called Express Sanitizer that will do it for us. We just tell it to sanitize a property, which will just get rid of any script tags inside of it. We don't have to write that code. Okay, so let's go back though. We have a few issues. One, these images, yes, we'll get back to styling these, but let's start by truncating these posts so we don't see all of this content on the index page. Let's leave it to the first 100 characters and then put an ellipsis afterwards. So to limit a string, it's actually really simple. We saw it early on when we talked about JavaScript. We use the substring method. So on our index page, rather than the entire blog.body, we'll do blog.body.substring zero, first character up until, and we want the hundredth-ish character, that's fine for now. And I always get this wrong, it's a lowercase s, substring. Seems like it should be camel case, like it's two words, but it's not. All right, so now if we try this out, 
you see that we now have these truncated posts. And let's just add in that simple ellipsis here. So substring, and then outside of the EJS, dot, dot, dot. And then we have our read more link. So now our show page serves a purpose where we see a little bit, and then you can click read more and see the entire post. Great, so we've covered a lot in this video. We talked about show, talked about using the ID in the route, how it's a get request, we set up the route, we took the ID and found the corresponding blog, then rendered a template, but we also talked about some new things, including on the show template, using the dash here rather than an equal sign, which will actually render code, it will run the code and render the result. And then we also saw to date string, which is a nice way of transforming a date into a, a better format. It's still not that flexible. There are great libraries, there's one called moment.js, which lets you specify the exact format that you want. We might want something that looks like an, the month slash the day slash the year, and we might want something where the month is abbreviated, or we might want the entire month and the entire day of the week rather than sun and nov. You can do that with moment.js, much better way of, of handling dates if you want to be very explicit in the format that you want. It's just a simple library. You can install it uh, just like jQuery or any other client-side library. But we're going to go with this for now. It's built into JavaScript. We don't need any extra code other than this single line here. Great. And then the last thing was using substring instead of our index, which is more of review. We haven't seen this in a while, but we did see it early on. First argument is where we want to make the first cut. Second argument is where we want to make the second cut. We take everything in between. Great. All right. In the next video, we're going to work on update and edit.